All right, welcome everybody. Scott Jones with another edition of Spotlight on Addiction and Recovery, and I hope you are all uh, doing well out there during these difficult times. Uh, and speaking of those difficult times, we'd like to talk about some of that. So my guest is uh, is somebody that a lot of you guys know uh, from the South Florida area, but also one of my friends, Joel Breyer. Joel, how are you? Hey, Scott. Good to be here. I'm glad to be doing this. Hopefully, we'll get some good information out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, first of all, let's just for those people who don't know who you are, why don't you tell everybody a little, just a little bit about yourself? So I spent uh, 33 years as uh, the vice president of um, a rather large organization that represents firefighters in South Florida. And um, currently, I'm a service rep for the International Association of Firefighters. Um, during my career, I, I went into the field of uh, alcoholism and addiction because I discovered a need for it. I am an international certified alcohol and drug counselor, certified addiction counselor, certified event interventionist, and I hold a professional certificate in behavioral health. Um, and, and I'm getting old and I want to get the info out there. That's why we're, that's why we're teaching it. Well, that, you know, how about personally? I mean, you live in the area or, or you're, you've kind of gone back and forth between, uh, between uh, the, the uh, Gulf Coast and the uh, ocean. I, I do now, um, mostly on the Gulf Coast, but it doesn't matter. We're, we're, you know, it's everywhere. This is disease. Yeah. You can hide from anybody. And, you know, fortunately for me, I teamed up with the, the Addictions Training Center a while ago, and we've got some certified interventionists that have the firefighter product now, and right. and they're actually doing it. We've had uh, two or three of them just in the last two weeks that have been successful, I'm happy to say, and the guys are very, very proud and happy to have done it, and, you know, a couple of them are in recovery, and, you know, for them, it's just pure service. Absolutely, and what Joel's talking about, of course, is uh, Addiction Training Center's uh, intervention training um it's called an event interventionist and we have two levels of training we have a, a regular certified event interventionist training and then we have a training that includes a uh, fire service uh component to it that joel does and uh so whether it's you're a first responder firefighter or just somebody who maybe works in the business or somebody who just wants to help people that's a good thing to check out so go to atceducation.com atceducation.com and check it out but for now, let's talk about what's going on. Now, now you are, um, you're one of those people, you, you don't hide your recovery from people and things like that. No, right? no, that wouldn't help me. Right, but there's a lot of people that still believe in doing that. Yes. I mean, we, we're not going to fault them, obviously. It's what they believe, but for you, you have to live it out in, like out in front, right? I, I have to live it out in front. I think anybody that really wants to successfully recover or continue to recover because it's a lifelong journey. Um, you know, it, 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 the the biggest thing about being in a in a program of recovery is honesty. And if you're having to hide something from the very onset, um, you, you might not be in the right place. It's not for me to to tell any individual how to handle that. But for me, um, open discussions are, are, are not a problem. Um, and, and, and they really never have been uh, because I don't need to be defending myself over something somebody discovered. It's out there. Uh, and I think that the only way that uh, somebody's really going to get it is for them to hear my story. So I w willingly tell it um, in almost every intervention that I do. Excellent. And, uh, you know, and I, I wanted to point that out to say that, you know, when you're talking about uh, getting people help and we're talking about the problem of addiction, um, you're not just watching from the sidelines. You're all in. You're all in whether you're helping somebody or trying to help a family or or just talking to people. You go all in. This is very important to you. It's important. Um, I've never made a living at doing this, although you know, some people absolutely have to. Um, I've been generous with, with the time because I think it's important for me. It's more about um, living the life that I live today that I want others to discover uh, than it is about, you know, earning a living. Um, we are donating 
funds back mm -hmm. for the intervention course, but that's not what this is about. Um, this is this is about you know um, what's going on today. Uh, about uh, I guess I'll use your um, your one of your podcasts as the the cover for this is left living out loud. Yeah, you know. And, and and letting people know that there is another way, and the best way to do that is to be open and honest and, and, and share about your discovery. And many of the folks that, um, that, that I have worked with over the last 30 or so years um, that are have been successful in recovery, um, a lot of them are still on the job today, and they do live out loud. Mm -hmm. They let you know. Uh, you know, this is a, not a, a thing about stigma anymore. This is a thing about pride. Absolutely. About saying, yeah, I'm doing this and I'm going to continue to do it. And if you got a problem, I'll help you do it. Absolutely. You know, and it's funny because, uh, you know, people who do pull back from that, it's almost like they're shameful uh, about their recovery. And, you know, hey, listen, you know, I don't know about you, Joel. I was never ashamed of throwing up in the street or falling down in a bar or making a fool out of myself. Why should I be ashamed of not doing that, right? Exactly. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. It, you know, it's this, <laughs> we can get a whole lot deeper than yeah, that. Yeah, we could. Yeah, um, we could. That was the easy part. <laughs> you know, uh, unprotected sex, uh, dirty needles. Um, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't, We. you know, some of the things I did to jeopardize my crew members were it was, there isn't enough amends you can make for doing some of the things that that I know that I did right. and I know that others are doing because if I did it, others are doing it. But but by putting yourself out there, it's it's a start. It, it is. It's a part of the process of paying back. Um, now we've touched on it, and this is where we're going with the show today. Um, and again, thanks for joining us right here. But. Uh, this is really important right now. There is a big difference. And even though it's not making the news and people aren't talking about it a lot because COVID is the big story and the elections are the big story, but addiction and alcoholism and depression and mental health stressors, there's a big difference between last year at this time and this year at this time. It's it's a dangerous, dangerous situation, is it not? You know, Scott, maybe the general public doesn't know that. I think more of them know about it than ever before because the, the buzzword of PTSD right. is everywhere. It's on the news. You hear it as a term that the civilian uses constantly. But um, my folks, my population that I work with are being smothered. They're being smothered. Not only do we have, you know, the the mandates of what you got to do. We're beyond mandate in my business. Uh, in my business, it's it, it really is for your life because, you know, PPE is a matter of survival in the fire service. We don't ever know what we're working with. We don't know. We didn't know in the 80s when we went in the back of that automobile that was busted into pieces and glass all over the place and blood everywhere. We didn't know if that person had HIV or not. We had to right. protect it. We didn't know if they had hepatitis. Yeah, we lost people from that. We lost people from hepatitis. We have people at work that contracted that, uh, you know, in the 80s and 90s and are still working with it. Thank God that, you know, they've come up with some better treatment for it and can actually, and, and even with hepatitis C, arrest it completely. Right. So, um, you know, hopefully one day with COVID that will happen. But the fact of the matter is that now um, you can't, you can't even go in a fire station without wearing a mask. You know, yeah. it, it, once you get inside the bubble, you know, I guess you can. But if you're not from inside that bubble, you're not coming in. Right. You know, without, without PPE. And most of the time, they're going to reach at the door. I know when I go to the firefighters uh, the clinic now for any kind of thing, but I can't go in the door. I have to sit outside. I come to my car. Okay, what's going on? Click, you know, masks on, gloves on, face protection on. And so, you know, we have to remember in one of my previous discussions, my 40 years of fire service, my five decades, um, that 
we were already alienating ourselves from each other enough by technology. Right. Um, you know, the texting and, and bringing work life from home into the station because we had smartphones. But now we're covering our faces. We're walking opposite directions from each other. You go to the store now and somebody's in the aisle and both of you are like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you, you can't even look at each other. You're heading in two different directions. And so it's nerve wracking um, and it causes a change in behavior to our population where if you, if you thought post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms like hypervigilance were bad before, yeah, you don't need PTSD to be hypervigilant about COVID if you are a first responder or a nurse. Well, Joel, let me let me ask you this, because, you know, obviously you're coming from a background of being a first responder. And I'm sure, um, you know, I, I'm sure everybody can draw a few ideas in their heads about the stress of being a police officer walking up to an unknown assailant, the stress of being a fireman walking up, not knowing if there's a, somebody in the building, not in the building, what's going to happen. Um, all of these stressors for different first responders, whether it's military, EMTs, paramedics, whatever. Um but I'm wondering, is there any way that you can maybe describe to John Q. Public, the regular person out there, uh, just how much that affects them? I mean, we make this idea that, yeah, that's gotta be hard, but I don't think we can really get the scope of how much that affects a person in adding new things like COVID to an already stressful job. I mean, can you describe that in any way? Is there any way you could do that? It, it, I know it's hard. Probably take two days to do it right, but in the past, we've always been concerned mm -hmm. about bringing stuff home to the family. We um, we have washers and dryers in the stations. We, we should be washing our uniforms there so none of that stuff goes into your house. Um, decontamination... Um, uh, procedures have increased, you know, equally to the amount of problems that we have with exposure. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, we still got to go home. And we have an airborne uh, virus that um, has killed 200,000 plus, uh, is infecting, um, you know, if one person gets it and carries it in, and you can do that unknowingly, everybody gets it. Kids are getting it. Parents are worried. Their kids, you know, the ones that are actually going to live school uh, are going to bring it home. Uh, and, and then the family unit at home is worried that the parent, either male or female, husband or wife, is going to bring it home to their family. And so everybody is walking on eggshells. Yeah. And, and, you know, mom may have a different idea about it than dad. Uh, you know, depending on kid relationships and things like that, because we know our our population is away from the home a lot and, and day and night. And, and so those relationships change. You're walking on eggshells. Um, they can cause arguments about who, what, where, and why. Uh, if there is any uh, type of, um, you know, self-medication mode thinking, um, like I got to get away from her or she's got to get away from him. And, you know, I, I got to relax. I can't sleep, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, we know what the simple go to is you're not getting to the doctor in 15 minutes. Hell, you're not getting to the doctor at all these days unless you wait. Right. You know, so let's pick up a drink. <laughs> yes. Know? And, 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 you know, that's your, that's your quickest answer. It's your, your cheapest, easiest vacation from life for a brief period of time. Right. Um, and, and I'm not here to tell the world that it's no good to, to kick back and, and relax once in a while. I'm telling you for our population, it's a habit that can easily be created just through that one time because it feels good. And when it's over, I'm going to go back to all this. Yeah, you know, and, and so our our guys and our girls um, uh, have an increased um, exposure to 
to, to trauma, not just by running the calls, which is cumulative over and over and over and over and over and over, um, but it, it, it's constant because now, no matter where we go, we're worried about who's going to get exposed. Does this person have this, that, or the other thing to a greater extent than ever before? Now, you did, you talked about you know using the uh, using alcohol and drugs um, as kind of that break that relief that they need from the stress and the in the trauma that they're dealing with. Uh, what other kind of things are you seeing being manifested by all of this stress beyond just alcohol and drugs? What other kind of behaviors are you seeing? Well, we're seeing a, a, a strong increase in domestic issues. Um, uh, uh, divorces um, that have stemmed from, you know, that internal, I mean, when you're stuck at home, you can't go out to eat, it, it, you know, going to the supermarket, only one because, yeah, you know, it, at least we can keep track, you know, it, it, you're, you're living in a bubble and, right. and you, you're, you're normal. If your mindfulness, the way you processed through trans crisis um, was to go socialize with your friends, go out for dinner, maybe a golf game with a group of people, yeah. a, a, a trip to the ball game. It, it ain't happening. It's not happening. Yeah. And, and, and so um, a, a lot more, a lot more of that cumulative trauma is storing at a much quicker rate without a lot of time to process it. Wow. So <clears throat> I know that, you know, one of the things that I do when I relieve stress is, is or have in the past, has always been music. It's been like going out with some friends and playing or, or going out and seeing a band and doing that. And I know a lot of people in the music industry, that's all been shut down. So basically, you know, if I'm stressed, I'm going home. And now certainly I don't have the kind of stress that a firefighter would have or somebody else. But if I'm stressed and then I go home to somebody who has just been stuck in that house all day, that's not a lot of relief for either one of us. No, I I, I had tickets to five different shows in five different places. That's Anybody my, good? A lot of people good. <laughs> that off. No, it's all right. It's all right. So uh, a, a, a lot of good shows that, and I had, I mean, I, I went. I have vacations based around music. Yeah. And the last time that I had a vacation based around music was. January uh, January 28th 2020 and I was in a packed theater in New York City. Wow. 3 days later they had Just, a full yeah. event they had a full event in Madison Square Garden um with an Allman Brothers tribute, right? Right. And the the bass player Oteil Burbridge who is a Florida resident lives in Boca Raton was hospitalized with COVID, and many, many others that were in that show. You're talking about one of the entertainers. Yeah. You know, um, and the next morning, the world ended. Right, right. That was it. Um, I was in the Beacon Theater uh, three nights before that. Uh, That's, at least you got that last one in. Let I me did tell you. get it in, but I had a lot more other shows yeah. to go to. You know, when I I, I I take vacations, I'll go. For instance, the before the first of the year, New Year's Eve, uh, my wife and I got in a plane, flew to San Francisco, went to three dead shows for New Year's. No more. Wow. Yeah, can't you know? And we don't know when that's going to change. We don't know what's going to come back and what's not going to come back. How about the tens of thousands of people that got stuck with tickets and now they have to go through this yeah. whole reversal process? Yeah. It's stressful. Now, it may seem, and I'm sure some people watching this is like, what? So you miss a concert. This is what we're just kind of pointing out that every little thing that you've take, taken for granted as, oh, well, if I do this, I feel good. And if I do that, I feel good. All those things have been kind of like, kind of washed away. So people have to find new strategies. By the way, as long as we're talking about music, I know you and I could both tip our hat to Eddie Van Halen, who we just lost. Sorry, Eddie. Great, great innovator in music. Uh, um, a long time recovering alcoholic. Yeah. Um, and a, a, just a really decent guy. Um, so from Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, to his family, uh, Wolf and everybody. Yeah, really. Um, so I I got to see him play. I'm sure you did too. Oh, a couple just, times. Yeah, yeah. Actually, all three, all three <laughs> different uh, 
um, Van Halen's Van Halen, Van Hagar, and Wolfie Van Halen. So if you're watching, you're seeing this discussion, this is normal for you and I in our lives to talk about music and go see people and go do that. We can't do that anymore. Maybe it's somebody else to go out and play golf. You can't do that. Or maybe you starting to be able to do that, but it's been taken away for a while. Um, going to sporting events, you know, they got football playing and nobody can go and see it. So this is the problem. What is the solution, Joel? Because we can't just leave them with all these nightmares and say there's no way out. What are the strategies they can use in the situation we're in today to survive it? You know, it's a good question because when you talk about the sporting goods, when you couldn't go to a game, yeah. what did you do? You had a party at your house and all your friends came over. Right. And you watched the game together. And you maybe you threw down a few beers and you had a good time and everybody rooted. You can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. So, you know, to me, what I found the answer has been is, one, um, if you have a family, you know, take the time to get to know your, your, your wife and your kids again, because at some point it's going to end. And in, in, in our uh, environment, we do for a living, um, it, 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 any day could be the last day. Yeah. So, yeah. so. You know, take that time to get to know them and, and take some time for yourself. And there are things that you can do. You, you, outdoor activities, you know, are, are spectacular. Um, in, in this environment, I spent a lot of time fishing up the East Coast, thinking, okay, I'll stop and visit in on people that I know that will have me that aren't worried about it. So I went to the clinic, I got a COVID test, got a case of masks, and I headed up the coast. I fished in New York. I fished in New Jersey. I kept going. I fished in Massachusetts. I went all the way to Maine. I drove every state in the East Coast of the United States by myself in my car. Mm. I had to get out. I had to. Yeah. It was like, I am claustrophobic. Uh, I've got to go, you know, interact with the world. And I was able to do that with very, very minimal risk. Got back, got another test, everything was good, and, and I'm on to the next thing. I'm fortunate, I live on the water, I got a boat in the backyard, I can go out, but uh, I have friends that are have, have now bought surf rods and beach baskets so they can go to the beach and fish for, you know, pompano and other things that we do here in Florida. I know we're gonna broadcast this all over the country, yeah, so, yeah. you know, but there are other places, our friends up in, in Illinois, you know, they've got the Great Lakes there. There's plenty right, of stuff yeah. to do. Um, there's hunting. Uh, I'm getting ready to go up to my camp next week. I'm, a, I'm not bringing anybody. I'm going to go sit in my uh, beautiful 36-foot <laughs> new camper, and I'm going to go out in the woods in the morning, and uh, I'm sure that it would be quite peaceful, and I'll do what I got to do. I got a computer. I got a hotspot on my phone. I can get to a meeting if I need to. I'm reachable in case there's an emergency. And that's how I've been living life. Mm, I mean, right. You've got to be mindful no matter what it is. I don't care if you collect butterflies. Go collect butterflies. Yeah. You know, if you're a stamp collector, you can you can buy stamps online. You know what I mean? And it's a great time to discover new things. Yes. Now, you said at the beginning, you know, get to know your family a little better. Spend some time. You know, try new things. Sit and play cards one night. Uh, you know, play poker for, uh, for 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 potato chips or or Monopoly. Bring back the oldies and goodies. Monopoly. I can go days on Monopoly, right? Deadopoly. What? Deadopoly. Deadop. Oh, Grateful Dead version. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And there is there yeah. is a dead Parker Brothers made uh, a Deadopoly. You can go on Amazon. You can get the Game of Life. You can do all those things. But rediscover things. If you wanted to learn an instrument, start playing guitar, harmonica, something. Um, Too frustrating. Right. <laughs> right. Draw, paint, do something. Uh, my mom started painting like little rocks, like little, just kind of just for fun. She's actually turned that into a small business already, and it's like it, just finding something to do. So. It's really important that you don't sit and focus on the negativity of it. Look for the positive aspects you, of it. You've got to find something to take your mind out of what it is that we're going through right now. Yeah. And, and take a, and, you know, a two-hour vacation or a two-day vacation or whatever you can afford to do. Yeah. Um, I, I visited a friend who now is suffering with lung cancer 
uh, and COVID. Um, and what he has done is he, he he's an artist. He's a guitar player, very good, you know, composer. And he couldn't meet with these people that he was playing with anymore every week. So he bought these glass plates and he bought rock and roll magazines from all over the country, all over the world. Yeah. And he's made these rock and roll themed bass plates. And I got one for you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I have the regular, I love regular that. Beatle one for you. Oh, well, you know, I'm a Beatles fan. That's yep, good. <laughs> exactly. And oh, that's beautiful. fantastic. They're beautiful. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, I, I think, Joel, what it really comes down to is, you know, you talk about, you know, with you, it was a little bit of wanderlust. Get out and travel a little bit, do some fishing. Uh, but, you know, I also know you spend some time with the family. Um, you know, with others, it might be family time or taking up a new hobby. But it does require a little bit of faith and some effort. You cannot just sit there and expect that you're going to be entertained or that someone else is going to make everything better for you because that's when you get angry because they'll let you down every time. you got to do something, right? I mean, that's recovery itself. It, Nobody can give it to you. you got to get off your ass and, and work for it. It is it is a recovery, um, but if you're a, a first responder and you have a peer group and you call a peer, um, you're going to hear the same thing from them. And you may even get invited to do something with them, whether they're gaming online right, um, or... or they're having virtual meetings to discuss what's going on. Um, there's so many meetings online now that yeah. I've had the opportunity to meet people from all over the world. Staggered English or not, it's really been, uh, that part of it's been rewarding. So uh, that being said, if, if, if there's that part of the virtual world, there's other parts of the virtual worlds that where you can learn something. You know what, if you're sitting home, and you're not doing anything, probably starting to suffer a little bit. School. That's a great idea. Go back to school. Get you know, finish your degree. You know, get 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 whatever it is that you know you're aspiring to do. You've got the time, and if you've got any interest and you're looking for something rewarding for yourself, I don't think there's much more rewarding than achieving a level of education. I think that's a great idea. It gives you self-worth and self-value. It, it makes you feel accomplished. It feels like you're achieving something during that time. Um, and you end up with a product at the end, the product being you. You're an improved you. Uh, yes. So definitely do that kind of stuff. But most importantly, if you start to feel uh, that you're losing your grip, if you start to feel like, I mean, even like that, if you can't shake that lonely feeling, that sadness, if you can't shake that, you need to call somebody. Don't wait until someone's packing your bags and kicking you out the door. Don't wait until you raise your fist in anger and have to regret that the rest of your life. Don't do that. If you're starting to feel something, say something to somebody, right? More, yes, and most importantly, don't pick up a drink. No, Don't pick no. up a drug, especially if it's something that you kind of crave because you're just asking for problems. Yeah. And, and, and in, in this situation, it's even more difficult for somebody like me to get in and get you out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make it worse. A lot of secrets going on right now. Don't make it worse. I've said this. I must have said this on uh, uh, maybe seven or eight different podcasts that I've done. Uh, in some areas, there's a 52% 52, 52 increase in overdose deaths in some major uh, cities. It's not getting better right now. So if you got something going on, don't say, I have a few drinks, I'll deal with it later, or I'm just, uh, maybe next week. Don't do that. You, we, we, because of the isolation, because of everything else that's going on and the stress and all the other things, you're at more risk now than you ever were of having a problem. Get it dealt with. There's, there are people out there that will find a way. Like you said, it's hard to get to people, but you find a way, don't you? Well, we're, we're training them to look for the signs and symptoms now right. uh, that, that may lead them to suspect there's a problem. And then if they suspect it, what to do from there to find out if it's for real. Yeah. Um, it, it's so important. You know, fire first responders and, and police officers are undergoing massive yeah. scrutiny right now. Yeah. And the pressure is really on for them. And, and we have firefighter and police terminations at, at an extremely high rate now. 
We know that firefighter suicides have been through the roof over the last several years. Um, I've talked about statistics there. Um, I can tell you from, from last year we had 113. It may have actually gone up because we don't always get accurate reports to start. Um, and and what, what I got from a very reputable source was that 57 of those were related to drugs and alcohol. So there was drugs and alcohol involved in the suicide. Yeah. Um, Definitely. It's more than half. More yes. than half. Yes. You know, and I'm sure we can equate the other half, the majority of those, to some sort of mental health disorder that, if given the attention, probably would have changed the, changed the script on that, too. Well, I, 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 yes, and I've said this before. We're a large group, a large population. Yeah. There's 300,000 plus firefighters in the International Association of Firefighters. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there's more than that in the PBA and the FOP. Right. And, you know, a lot of times we don't know each other's backgrounds. We don't know where we come from. You can only get what's told to you or what's put on a job application. We don't really know the whole story. And so... We, we come to, 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 to live with people and learn about them, and, and we know what, um, what their work habits and even some cases their family habits are, uh, and we, were, we are able to notice when there's a change that doesn't look right. Absolutely. So listen, the bottom line, folks, if, if you're having an issue, uh, speak up, say something. If you're somebody who knows someone uh, a family member, a friend, a coworker, uh, another, a fellow first responder who's having an issue, say something, speak up. Um, don't end up on the news the next day being the guy who says, I should have said something. Don't be that person. Say something. Um, if you're not familiar with who to speak to, if you are a first responder, uh, Joel, who would they go to to find out? Every system's a little bit different, fire and police and, and, and rescue in different places, uh, and they're all different unions. But what's a good general rule to find out You know where they can find help? Is it union reps, or where, what would it be? Union reps are a great place to start. Okay. Now, I, I am a, a resource, but for stuff specific to your area, I would always refer you back to your... A local affiliate because I, I, I need to do that yeah, um, as yeah, a yeah. rep for the international that's the best place however in, in some cases the calls come in to me that uh, are are beyond uh, what the union can do for you right now and their emergencies and we got to take care of them right now and I, as a rep I've been able to work with other local affiliates in getting the assistance that we need for somebody that is in grave distress and, and I've never ever had a local affiliate say no we're not going to do that they've, they've always always assisted me in, in, in getting people help and, and I've never you know I've not heard any any consequence to that at all right right um, definitely uh, let's deal with the problem let's yeah. deal with the issue it's not getting better out there it's a hard time right now the last thing we need is unnecessary suffering. And all addiction, all addiction is unnecessary suffering. It doesn't have to happen. All it takes is somebody to speak up. All it takes is somebody to care enough to reach out their hand. And we need people to do that. Joel, I want to thank you for being here, my friend. All right. Oh, we, we're going from here. You're going to go fishing? <laughs> no, I got. Uh, I Joe took a three-hour drive to get over here. Yeah, and um, and I, I made. You're going to go hunting. I mean, <laughs> I'm leaving. That's that's the end of next week. But I'll be working from there as I have in the sure. past. Sure, sure. Um, the one good thing about getting other people trained, um, they're eager to serve. They want to do what they yes. need to yeah. do. Um, they they call and ask questions. Um, I've worked as a, as a conduit for. Uh, different folks with different problems to get to treatment um, and understanding, you know, the, the newer people don't really understand the insurance as well as uh, yeah. as I do from the time I spent in it. Um, the IAFF um, has been a big help because they've opened their treatment center, a center of excellence, 
uh, and they have some satellite locations that they're using for uh, follow-up care in various spots. So, you know, hats off to them for doing that. And uh, we use them when we got to use them. And everybody should have a local treatment center for an emergency. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you want to learn more, certainly check us out at addictiontrainingcenter.com or atceducation.com. Uh, find out more about us. Uh, Joel's information is on there as well if you want to reach out to him. But uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Joel, we'll catch you when you get back from your little trip, and we'll uh, do some more of these uh, shows. And uh, I'd definitely like to get more involved in um, issues with families and uh, see if we can take a run with that. Super. All super. right. I'll bring my son in. Oh, that'll be perfect. That'll be perfect. I'd bring my son if he ever talks to me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. For that, uh, Joel Breyer, Scott Jones, thanks for joining us right here on Spotlight on Recovery. Stay well, stay sober. <laughs>